Good morning, dear ones, and how are we doing today? <laughs> the date at the time of filming this video is the 22nd of January 2024. I'm looking down at my phone because I've forgotten already. So, welcome to this video. Before I go in, just some guidance before we go any further. So, to watch this video, please make sure that you are in a healthy, balanced state of mind, that you're relaxed, that you're not stressed, that you're not drunk, <laughs> that you've not taken any kind of illegal substances, that you're not under the influence of alcohol. Could you also make sure that any minors under the age of 18 are not present? What was that? Oh, it was my candle crackling. That was weird. Did you hear that? My candle started to crackle. Anyway, okay. Um, and I did it again. You may find either just before, during or after this video, you will, especially if you're female, and in fact now, because even if you're male, you still hold the divine feminine energy, you may find that you have a reaction. So you may find it's going to be a purging reaction. I've had it already this morning when I was doing the notes, which is why my eyes look a bit, for me it was sinuses and, and this absolute extreme sneezing. I'll explain what it's all about. Or you may find you have diarrhea or you may find you start to sweat or you may find you even get a little bit angry or a lot angry and you may have to step back from it it was explained to me as this by the way this video is not a trip down ghoul lane if you've come to this video and you're new to my channel and you're like oh, channeling or oh, psychic speaks to fred west oh, what's he gonna say oh, who else did he kill all of that kind of stuff this video is not for you this video is a healing tool and a teaching tool. Um, like with all these channelings, portals are opened to bring healing for those of you that are ready for it and are willing for it. I understand and I appreciate that these channelings I do with criminals or people that souls that had lifetimes as criminals can take some guts and some gusto to be able to, in fact, most of you get it. And I'm always humbled by the comments that we get so we admire we've done um peter sutcliffe we've done the cray twins um i think like i've done something else but i'm not sure mrs cray um my candle is flickering away um that's what this video is for so if you've come in and you're thinking it's going to be a trip down ghoul lane also as well what i don't want in the comments section sorry with these videos i have to put some rules in place because it's just it's fair when people come to something like this that it's actually treated properly and respectfully that we don't fill the comment section full of did you know he did this did you know this naming victims naming crimes and trying to drag the energy of the video down this is a body of work that is going to be aimed at trying to help okay so before we go any further, if you don't know Fred West, then please Google him. I appreciate that everyone knows Fred West because they may have come from a different country or they may not even be old enough to remember him. So Fred West was a serial killer who committed many crimes with his wife, Rosemary West. And Fred West killed himself, although we're going to be discussing that in further detail later in this video. Um, basically, he was born on the 29th of September, 1941. He died on the 1st of January, 1995. His numerology is 35, which then goes into eight. And this is interesting. You need to experience abundance, not make money or status your God or your enemy and learn about balanced personal power, not to overpower or be powerless. Now, if you know the story of Fred West, you know that he overpowered his victims, obviously. Um, it's a vast, vast subject, which probably I really don't want to go into the ins and outs of it on this camera, on this video, because it's just going to muddy the waters. But it was a serial killer. He murdered, he raped, he tortured, he buried people in his garden. A lot of this happened within the family home. And I know when I first got the nudge to do this video I was like I'm a bit com uncomfortable with this and I couldn't understand why because I've channeled criminals before and what's different from Peter Sutcliffe to Fred well, oh Jimmy Savile's been Jimmy Savile as well and you're I know I've forgotten somebody I had to really sit with that and I thought what is it what is the difference between all of those and this person 
And one of the things I felt was that he attacked people close to home, within the home, and his home was his killing field. That's why I'm getting the words. His home was his killing field. And to me and to you, the home is and should be a sacred, safe space where you can come in and you can shut the door on the world and you're safe, you're sacred. You can relax, you can be yourself. But this is someone, along with his partner, well, wife, Rose West, that turned the home into something else. And it was a crazy, crazy story. The house has since been knocked down. And I think from what I've seen online, it's now like a, a walkthrough, like a memorial garden. So it was that bad that the house had to be knocked down, people rode in the garden, etc. When he first came through, one of the nudges I got was that he would be talking about the father wound. So obviously there's a group healing coming up soon, the father wound. And without even realising it or thinking, I was like, well, I don't, I'm not happy about this. Because he may have had an issue with his father and there probably was something like that. And I get that, I get that, I understand that perfectly. But if I come onto camera and I start talking about, um, this is Peter Suckley then, Fred West and his father, that may go down for some people, like a cup of cold sick. You've got to be so careful with these videos as well. Um, and I actually, and I actually asked my guide, and I was like, what is it he wants to talk about? And my guide went, why don't you ask him himself rather than <laughs> using a third party? Okay, I will. Because if you're going to channel him, when I say channel, by the way, when I do channeling, I don't allow possession, which is why the name of my videos are, are getting changed to Psychic Speaks To because I don't allow people to come in and have fun. I know people go into trans channeling, but I don't allow that. How I do it is, like if me, you and them were in a room, but you were deaf and couldn't hear, or you were deaf to, or if we're on the phone, say if I'm on the phone to them and they're saying, and you're saying to me what they're saying, and I'm saying that, I don't allow them to have access, okay? So, um, I asked him, I said, and I said that to him, I said, look, I said, I can't really do a video where I come on, and we're talking about your own father wound with your father because that may be like a cup of cold sick for some people. I get that. And he was like, no, it's not about my father, as in his father. It's about me and being a father. And I was like, oh, God, yes, he was. A because you just don't associate fathers with what he did. It was like, oh, my God. Oh, God, yeah. Because actually, as a father, could you get more horrific? Could you get more horrific? And it was like, holy cow. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We'll go with that. Um, I've been on and off doing this video over the past couple of weeks. Also, as well, in case you don't know, when I'm doing this with... Um, sorry, this is part of my purge. It's a watery eyes I've got with this. Um, when you're doing, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I don't just wake up one morning and think, let's channel a criminal. I actually sit with the energy for quite some time before, up to two and three weeks, in and out, really looking into what they can bring. The These are souls that have gone over, that have transitioned and are on their healing path. So they've gone through their life review with their guides and they can come back and give us some insights into how we, a species, and them went wrong. So I don't just pick up, oh, let's do Bonnie and Clyde. I don't do that with criminals or people that had taken those criminal soul contracts. Oh, sorry, I'm looking down because I've got some notes. It's not, I'm not going to be constantly looking at notes throughout this channel. Lane. It's just I've got some bullet points that I don't want to lose. So last night I was thinking about this channel lane and I was just starting to fall asleep and I was shown this vision of a, what the column? Two up, two down, terraced houses, through terraced, um, one up, one down, all that kind of thing. You know, the, the old-fashioned terraced houses. But the the era that I was shown, I would say, was 1940s. And it was a neat house. It was a neat terraced house. And there was a woman, and she was housewife. She had the penny on. I saw her as clear as day. I could see the wallpaper, the paint, everything, and the energy of the home. And something happened in the kitchen, and she ran through to the living room, and she cried. And I came to, and I knew it was in connection to, I want to call him Peter, I don't know why. If I call him Peter during this video, ignore me, it's Fred West. This interest in that, we'll have a look at that. Uh, maybe he had similar, oh, yes. B 
because they do say that he was also a mother's boy, a mummy's boy, of which Peter Sutcliffe was. So is there something in that that they were very similar? Very different crimes. Um, were they though? Just different opus operandi, whatever it is. That's a posh word for Claire. Different type, different ways of carrying out the same crime. Um, he buried him in the garden, but Peter scattered them all around Yorkshire, well, England, to be precise. Um, and I was like, I wonder if he's showing me his mother, but straight away I got, no, it's 25, number 25 Cromwell Street, which is where he lived and where the crimes were committed, or the vast majority of them. So I was like, right, okay. Then, all last night, I have received downloads off a scale that I've not received whilst doing a channeling since I did Bram Stoker, where literally most of the night I've been asleep, but I've been getting download after download after download, insight after insight after insight, of which today I cannot remember. And what happens is you don't remember them because actually you're giving them without even realising you're giving them. It can be the energy of this video. So what it is, is the, the downloads are built into the energy of this video as a transmutation to those that are watching. Um, or as also, as well as, they will the messages will come through um, via what today's chat. But a lot of the time it's wiped, you can't remember because it would be too much information for, for our physical aspects to hold. I've got a cup of tea. I like the fact I've chosen the cup of peace. And when he chose his grid cloth, I've had this grid cloth. I'll put a picture of it on my um, community tab, on my Instagram, my Facebook. It's a new grid I've had and I've not used it yet, I don't think. And it's got doves of peace on it and peace written around it and love and love hearts. It's very, very, very Valentine's actually. And actually when I saw it, I was like, is this really an appropriate cloth for Fred West? And what I got was actually yes, because in order to heal hatred and the darkness, we have to throw love at it. So if I'd have come in here with a dark altar cloth, lots of dark crystals, dark jumper, pearl faced, taking it all very serious, that, that would help to feed into the darkness. But actually by using things like, let me share with you, um, rose quartz, clear quartz, Selenite, one of the decks he's chosen, by the way, again, shocked me, but it shouldn't. Don't be ignorant, Claire. The Secret Language of Light by Denise Jarvey. So that'll be interesting to see what comes out with that. Um, I know I'm going on a tangent. I apologise. When you channel, you go on tangents. Um, I then went on this morning... And I was just Googling some pictures of him to make a thumbnail. And I just wanted to see some pictures of Cromwell Street. And as if by magic, a picture of Cromwell Street flashed up. And it was just a picture. I can't even describe it here. It was just a picture of a room. And you could see where the old decorating was from previous owners. So what he was doing was he was showing me how Cromwell Street was before... They took possession of it. Um, and I'll have a look into... Oh. The vision I saw with the woman that was in the kitchen, pottering away, doing her baking, doing her cooking, then stopped still, went into the living room and burst into tears, was that she had a moment in her house where she sensed what was coming but didn't know what. It's a bit like parallel lifetimes, you know, um, different dimensional shifts. You know, you can do this all the time without even realising it. So she was able to tap into something that was going to come into her house of which she had no control over. Maybe this house meant a lot to her. Um, it feels like that she's a, she's a proper traditional housewife where her life and her home was in within the four walls of her home. So yes, okay. Downloads, ooh, death. I was also shown an aspect of his death, but I was shown something quite different to what we were told in the news. And I was like, hmm. So this morning I Googled it and I actually couldn't find very little on his death. Apparently he committed suicide. There was a letter left for Rose, a love letter left for Rose. 
but apparently he committed suicide. Whilst I was on Google, I, I went out into a little bit of a trance this morning and I was really miles away thinking about your stuff. And an article was looking at me on my phone and it was by Charles Bronson, Charlie Bronson, another character who basically said, it was some old headlines where he basically said um, that he'd had a hand in the ending of Fred. And from what I could see written between the lines, he was basically making a lot of noise in his cell to mess with his head, mess with Fred's head. But I was shown something where, and I don't want to get into the ins and outs of it. Maybe we'll, just, we'll pull some cards in it, actually. Um, but I think the narrative there, and when you actually look at prison life, certain people that go into prison when they've done something to children or women, your life is miserable. Your life is miserable. Um, by all aspects of the people that you come across in those places. Um, so that was interesting. It was interesting how I then went on to this article where Charlie Bronson's basically saying, I drove him to it. They can find their ways and means. It's not good. It's not clever. Um, but it was interesting, the fact that that came up. Collective darkness reactions. So collective darkness. You know, I had that sinus thing this morning and you will probably have something similar at some point. It's because we're uncomfortable with our collective darkness. When a situation like this comes up in our world, in our countries, in our towns, our villages, our streets, there are actually opportunities to really look at our underbelly, the bile of society, the bile of society of which we are all part of. I've got a crystal because I know there's something else I want to come on to. One of the things he showed me yesterday was say that so. That's the soul, that's the soul. And what happens is woof, it implodes and it goes off into the into the universe. All these different fragments, but there's always a memory of the whole left. There's always a memory of the whole left. So these fragments go off, boom, 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 boom. Many different lifetimes, different universes, all the job lot. What happens is some of those fragments become contaminated. The software in them becomes fractured and diseased he's saying it becomes fractured and diseased that's how when you trace back your lifetimes you can be a really nice person but the healer will say to you oh you had a lifetime where you drowned a baby and you may be thinking not a chance i'm a good kind decent human being because we all have fragments that have gone off that have become diseased so that's how you that's how when we do work with people that have taken up the soul contract as cr criminals, um, we can speak to a fragment of them that is not diseased. Those fragments that go off into the universe and the fragments that can become diseased can heal. They can heal, but what happens is they fall into these vortexes of black pools of energy that... Um, force them into looking at themselves. Okay, does that make sense? So that's why we are everything. We have been everything, done everything. So when we get a situation like this in our world, um, it's so easy to go, <laughs> it's so easy to go, hang him, draw him, quad, all of that. It's so easy to go, well, don't watch that. Oh, don't do that. Oh, God, that's disgusting. Because actually... We should be going into our own darkness and seeing what it's telling us about healing our stuff. That these situations that come into the world are moments, <coughs> excuse me, moments where um, they can look at themselves and we can look at ourselves and countries can look at themselves. He also spoke about don't worry i'll properly bring him in even though he's already here and these are just my notes i don't want to lose track of these notes um how does fred meet rose how do two equally damaged human beings meet to meet each other meet equal damaged human beings anyway so more crystals and tom pep at the minute so we've got these two crystals these are these are two souls two souls Right, okay, we know that 
and they're pulsating out of frequency they're both pulsating out of frequency but this is um i don't know sally and simon and these are two really good human beings that come together because they can come in and have a relationship they've got their stuff they've got their similar inner child stuff from a similar parentage and all of that but they come together and they have a good life together they may have arguments and trauma and karma but it's fine so sally and simon then we've got fred and rose who are equals in their pain trauma darkness evilness if you want to use that word so what happens is they say they send the same pulsating energies out across the universe and they help to pull each other in so that's how you end up with well you always say it don't how did you have to put in client of all the people in the world you know myra and ian because we all put pulsating energies out into the universe and we pull our equal in now that can be controversial if you've been through an abusive relationship or the victim of but please remember what we said about the aspects of us that were the abuser in past lives. So we attract in what we are. And I know that can be controversial. I know from the past, from my own personal experience, when I was traumatized, I attracted in traumatized people. Traumatized friends, traumatized relationships, if you can call them relationships or situationships. Um, because you just do. Because... Anything of a higher vibrational quality cannot come in. And if it does come in, it gets chucked back out. Which is why you'll also get, and I'm being shown, maybe this is something that happened in his life, where you'll fall for someone and they just, you just can't, they, it just doesn't work and you get chucked out. But then they meet someone and they kind of get, so say you meet someone and they say to you, um, I'm not going to get married, I'm not going to get kids, I just want to keep it simple, I'm, you know, and, right, and yada yada yada. And you're like, okay, I love you and I'll just stay with you and I'll put up with all of that just to be loved. <laughs> and then he splits up with you, or she splits up with you, and then within weeks, months and a couple of years, they've got a baby, they've got married, they're doing everything they said they wouldn't do with you. Why is that? Because actually the person that they've met is of a energetic magnetism. They couldn't get with you because you were two different people. So you see that in abusive relationships where people say, you know, it was awful to me, but it seems like he's in a happy marriage now. It looks like it's a happy marriage, but under the surface, it'll be very, very unhealthy. Anyway. I'm also taking my time with this energy today. I'm not going to rush it. Not that I do rush things, but anyway. Oh. Age 17, he had a fractured skull. He had an accident. And he was unconscious for seven days. At this point, I want to also bring in the fact that when we have any kind of procedure or we're unconscious, and it's the same with alcohol or anything that sends you out, you can open yourself up for intrusions. So energetic external energies that can come in. Okay, and that's nothing to be, that's not, please again, don't go into fear. So for example, say if I need an operation, if I was going to go into hospital for it, I would take my guides in to make sure that whenever they took anything out, whatever it is they needed to take out, say if you go for a hip operating, that your guides make sure that what, because whenever you've got a gap, you need to fill it with something. And we've not got to the stage yet where we're conscious of that and we'll work with our team and our guides and say, make sure when they take that hip out, you fill it full of light. Because what happens is, other things when you're knocked out it's like we drink you know when you, you when you've drunk that much you become off your face you're out of it you collapse things come in things can start working with you now some of this stuff can work its way out and work its way off and we depending on where you are in your journey but a lot of the time it can stay about so i also wonder as well again it's not saying that's why this happened it's one of the things that all of these situations it's not just one reason it's many many different reasons many different reasons as to why these people become who they are and i think that's the notes done i asked him to pull two cards and i always do this with the channelings off camera it's my moment with the spirit that i'm going to be working with and he pulled these two cards which is the card of the bird and ten of wands and the page of swords at the bottom of the deck was 
the Sun card. And I was like, oh, they're interesting. They're very interesting. They actually do exactly what they say on the tin. That this is about unburdening, not just him, but all of us that are carrying whatever we're carrying. That makes us toxic. That makes us the black sheep, the oddball, the weirdo, the freak, the whatever it is. It's about facing this and healing it. And what how that can happen is many, many difficult incarnations, the Emperor. Um, where you're also, let me just, apologies, try and hold this up. Also as well, shown partners with the work with the world. The, I'm saying the world because the world is on the top of the deck. I'll show you about it. Partners that are actually, people coming together to bring out. So that's interesting. So talking about him and Rose, what I'm seeing is those two coming together. It's the lover's card to bring out each other's darkness as a purge. So two souls can also as well, he's also saying that it's also a group of souls can come together where you literally come into a lifetime where you're like magnets to each other and you're drawing it out of each other. You're drawing it out. You're drawing the bile, the underbelly, the trauma, the pain. And then you obviously go and you transition. And then once you transition, it's about learning from that so a lot of souls choose to come together to actually if you've ever had a relationship with someone you think god i don't know what effect he had on me but he brought the worst out in me i was erratic i was doing this that was horrendous or you'll meet a friend and that friend brings a worst out in you they bring out all your insecurities your fears and all of that it's the same thing so that's also what we'll be discussing in this video I was going to do some titles of things. Oh, again, collective shadow, internal shadow, facing your shadow to then leave yourself free to becoming the high priestess and working for a better life. I love this. This is good. So by coming into these relationships, situationships, these partnerships, friendships, family groups, work, work environments, it then leads leads the way forward to work at something better going forward in future incarnations. To have a life that you can celebrate going forward. To work for something better. To also as well attract in better people. More aligned people. Because um, he's saying underbelly attracts in underbelly. So, and the high priestess, you can reconnect into your intuitiveness. Your gentleness. Um... I'm also being shown that you may be related to someone that's brought somebody into their life or a friendship or whatever. And you're like, why are they doing this to themselves? We can't interfere with it because actually they have to work through this in their own way. And at a physical level, we don't understand what's going on. It's like, why are they doing this? Why are they with that person? Why are they playing with that person or whatever? It's because of that, because it needs to be healed. It needs to be healed, the Four of Swords. So, let's start. I'll show you a picture of him for those of you that. Well, obviously it's on the it's on the thumbnail. So, I think I still have it saved. It's interesting. There's something weird going on here. Um, no, it's not. It's just saved into a different folder. So that's him. That's the house. And that's the very famous streets. Well, it was the house sign. Um, I wonder where that's gone now. Anyway, are you ready? Let's have a drink. So, feet on the ground. Relax, relax your spines. Come into it with an open heart, open mind. Do not be afraid. Do not go into fear. Let's start to bring in the beings of light, guides of light, connecting to our guides of light, our beings of light, to 
bring in a pathway where the highest self of Fred West can come in and speak to us. So they've made like a selenite bench for him to sit on. So selenite, that's selenite. So it's a selenite bench. So he's healing as he's doing this. So we know what selenite is all about. Shall I read it for you, for those of you that don't? So it's about purification is selenite. But let me read. Let me be helpful rather than rude. Because it's frustrating, isn't it, when someone starts to talk about something and just presumes that we all know what selenite is. Like, oh, I don't know what selenite is. So let me show you. Let me, let me explain. Selenite properties, selenite benefits. Let me be helpful. It's a sort of mental clarity. This clarity enhances mental flexibility and enables strong decision-making abilities. It can affect everyday life as full mental clarity. Mental clarity. I think there was an issue there with him. Mental clarity into play to, less, to lessen confusion and mental disorientation. Selenite is also a stone of truth and honesty. This promotes good business practices as well as honesty in other types of relationships. You see, I'm glad I read that. Clearing, protection, shield. So he will have had some form of mental confusion. Okay, I might keep hold of this. So he will have had some form of mental confusion due to the accident, due to the life in which he was living, because all of that causes trauma and confusion, but also as well because of anything that was interfering with the field. Right, so let's get to it. So what messages do you have for those watching, Fred? Firstly, thank you for appearing today and thank you for choosing this group of people and myself to speak to. He says he's feeling lost. He's saying that there's many of us that are feeling lost. You know, he's showing me a city centre now and he's saying, you, you look over the city centre and all of these different people. And this doesn't mean to say they're all mergers or they've done horrific things. He's saying they're lost. Each and every one of them's lost in different levels. You've got people walking amongst you that are in desperate, angry demonic pain you've got people that are lost because they don't know who they are but it says we're lost we're all lost he's showing me himself as a child now and this lost feeling was there as a child he said he didn't understand how prominent this feeling of being lost was until he got to the other side and when you're lost and you have no direction, he's, say, he's showing me, um, it's weird when you're channeling spirit because they use different terminology to you in different ways of, and then you've got to try and process that. He's showing me um, like an internal sat nav that we're meant to have as humans, but many people don't have it. It's turned off, it's switched off. He's saying this can be via bloodline, although we state we're not making excuses. It can be via the bloodline. Certain bloodlines are switched off. There's some, sorry, I'm going to take these off because they're rattling. Um, I'll keep them on, I'll try not to rattle. Um, certain bloodlines are switched off. Um, If you find yourself in a position where you feel like you, you're switched off or you don't know who you are or you feel lost or empty, to make a process to where you can refind yourself because that's how it starts. He's saying it's not just in his lifetime as Fred, it's other lifetimes where you start to spiral. 
So it's about trying to, it says you stepping back from the noise of the world to spend time with yourself before it gets out of control. He's now showing me himself when he transitioned. I don't know if it's an analogy or if it's just, if it actually happened, but he's showing me part of his healing journey was having a mirror placed around him. There's actually a tarot card. It's in a deck, I don't know when we'll move and get it, but it's, in a, it's, a, it's a tarot deck that I've got. And basically it's somebody stood in front of all these mirrors and it's all been shown so everything was shown at him and it's almost like he's showing me like this he's just screaming and it's crying and it's pain so for anyone that's thinking is he repentive of course he is again he wouldn't be able to come through to me if he wasn't um that's another thing i don't just channel criminals that are still in the pain zone or that, are, that have no empathy after transitioning i know he didn't have it in lifetime but he has it now otherwise i won't bring this through at all i do have boundaries believe it or not <laughs> Some people online think I don't. Anyway, that's for another video. So he's, he's been shown all these aspects of himself. Um, and then he's showing me after the house has gone and he's stood in the garden and his guides keep coming in to help him fully transition. He feels like he was anchored there for some time. It's almost like he's there trying to look into the soil about where it started to go wrong. He's then showing me the fact that when you then come back on grid as a soul, it's hugely painful. It's hugely, hugely painful because he's showing me that he's in all of this pain, this energetic pain, um, because he's then shown what he's done. He's shown what he was a part of, what he created. So how do you come back on grid then? How do you switch back on again? Can you show us that process? He's showing me some scrolls. Is this his records? He's showing me a guide that absolutely, it's actually quite humbling. Because this guide, if you know the character of Fred West, and then you see this guide, he's got this guide, feels like, um, I'm being shown him like as, as a teenager, but he's like a, like a monk energy about him, a young, very pure soul that sat with, I got him Peter again, sat with Fred. Um, and they're looking through his scrolls. He's, and it took time and it was gentleness that did it for him to re-remember who he was, to re-remember that he also had good lifetimes where he did good things. Um, He's also saying that something he also learned when he went over was that anger and all of the darkness, the punishment, all of the judgment, none of that helps. He's saying the prison system's broken. For all that we understood he needed to be in there, it actually doesn't help because none of it worked for him. The judgment, the headlines, none of it. Prison system, none of it worked for him. But what worked for him was this higher frequency so what he's saying is if you want to change the world or change your world or understand something we've got to try and go higher in our frequency to go into anger and ritual it just makes it worse it adds it's like it's like a cake mixture it's just another component of the mixture um
would you want to say about being a father in your lifetime as Fred? interesting he's showing me that when you're a parent there is an energetic cord between you and a child that allows a connection he hasn't got that cord with his child or children um, so it's, all, it's a weird I'm, so excuse me for what I'm going to be saying next it's almost like the baby's born, but it's it's not just a baby. It's you know, like as a chat as a father, you pick up your baby, you think that's my child, or as a mother, that like you can feel the connection, the pulsating, the energetic connection, the blood connection. He can't feel that. There's something there that's not allowing him to do that. He's showing me now that there are beings within the universe that can take away these cords from people and replace it with other things. And if you become susceptible to these beings, it's almost like it can be game over for you. But remember the fact that you can then go over, you can transition and then you can get the healing and go forward. We're saying that's where connection, we've lost our connection with each other because the connections are sacred connections to each other. They've been tampered with. We've allowed them to be tampered with. And it's not also about blame. Oh, it's an, oh, it's an entity that's done this. You see, I told you, I'm a saint. It's not that. It's actually we've handed it over. We've lost our connection to spirit. We've lost our connection to source. We've lost the connection to I am part of the universe, part of the, uh, the all. Um, so when you start to give yourself away, you, you then make it easier for other things and also other people to come into your life. It's not just, I, I don't want this to be, let's blame the entities, because it's not, because I get triggered with clients when they do that. So it's not my fault, Claire, it's the entity. No, it's not. Um, don't give yourself away that much to something like that. Um, okay. Should we come with a tarot card? Some tarot cards from you. Because the, the pictures make it easier for people to understand. Show me what message you've got for the people watching. Ace of Swords, it's the same cards, it's the same cards that he pulled privately with me, it's the same cards, it's the exact same cards, the loss, this one obviously this is you know we didn't get this one before. The loss, the pain, the burdens that we need to. He's saying the thing is, what people don't realise is that we are all alike in so many ways that we can open the paper. He's showing me somebody opening the paper and going, oh, just like I did this morning. It's like, oh my God. But actually, we've all got these dark pools of pain. I'm trying to explain it the best way that I can. If you could look and see everyone's karma and everyone's exchange records and everyone's past lives, if it was as clear as this box of tissues, you'd understand the fact that actually when we're throwing stuff out or not understanding it, it's our, it's, it's our own karmic stuff that we're not understanding. Our own pain. The judgment. The Empress, the Creator, the Mother, the Father. 
and I've got the lovers coming in as well and the ending <coughs> Something you can learn from his life, he's saying, is the importance of love. The importance of making sure that the home is a safe place. He's saying that 25 Cromwell Street also had a sole contract with everyone in as far as it was pushed. Honestly, I mean, I was only a kid in the 90s, young teenager, but I remember it being everywhere. Books papers, magazines, and this was before the day of social media, it was everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. It's almost like the whole thing of 25 Cromwell Street was also about being shown, telling people, it's a warning, it was like, it's, I'm being shown like a warning bell, like a pulsating. And you may think, well, I'm sorry, I may be a bad mum, or I may have done a fair, or I may have done this, or I may, but I won't do what he's done. Would you not? You may not have done it in this lifetime, could be heading for it in another lifetime you could have also got it within your xj records everyone has stuff everyone has stuff um it was a warning if you think about the 90s and the 80s were awful times <sighs> i've said this before when we've when we've spoken about things back then if you look at pictures of people they were much more denser if you look at pictures of people now they're much more lighter um it was a reflection back of how society had got to where it had got because other people knew about it. Very similar to Myra, other people knew about it. He's saying neighbours, people within the family. And again, let me reiterate, I am not, and he is not saying, this is not about bypassing or projection. This is deeper than that. This is higher than that. This is saying that actually, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to kill a child as well, he's saying. Okay. It takes a village. Ooh. Can't put that in the, that, can't put that in the title, Claire. Don't be stupid. It takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to kill a child. Let me just sit that with you. We've all come across that house in one way, shape or form, where there's things happening that you don't want to say, that you don't want to witness. Or you may even say say something to someone and they're not interested. Um, you're showing me some of the people that were tasked with watching out for the welfare of the children, in the, of their children, or the people of the house, um, were also part of the problem. Also involved with stuff that was going on there. Anyway, I'm moving on from that because I don't want to get my wrist slapped. <clears throat> so, in relation to... Where are you now? Where are you now on your path? He's showing me another incarnation. A future, it could be a present incarnation, it could be a future incarnation, where he's going to be a school teacher. Let me just sit with it, because I saw him in front of people talking. No, it's not a school teacher. It's somebody within social services that is going round and teaching people about, what's it called? What's it called? Safeguarding. Where he, and it's almost like people looking at him and he's very high in his field. His information and his knowledge, you don't get it from university. And people are looking at it and thinking, wow. And it's almost like he's really social workers, police, probation, prison. They all want this guy to come in and talk to them. So he's talking to teenagers. He's talking to criminals. He's talking to all kinds of people. He's hospitals. He's doing talks. And he's very, very intelligent and very well versed on, on his subject. He's saying that the, the reason why he's so well versed is because he's talking from experience. 
and he's actually a very edgy person in this lifetime. He's not, you know, posh. He's he's come from a background where he's had quite a rough background in this future incarnation. Um, but that's part of his karmic payback. Let's see what the cards. Oh, you see, cannot make it up. Eight of Pentacles. If you've had a session with me as a client and Claire starts shuffling, then stops to listen to you and stops being rude. I always look at that end bot and that end that end um card because that is a big message and that is he's now working in so it's is a talker, a mentor um within these circles that's going around and doing speeches and talks on this kind of stuff on safeguarding. Is it having an impact? Mm, it is having an impact. Not the <coughs> excuse me, not at the speed. Ah, oh, why am I getting throat issues? Pong himself. So there's that as well as so I'm picking up, sorry. Um <coughs> God. That by the way is perfectly safe. I know some people go, oh, if you work with spirit, sometimes you'll pick some little nudges up from there. And you'll just feel it in a certain place. It's fine. It'll clear itself. Um, it's not happening as quick as he'd like or they'd like, as in they, as in the other beings. Um, he's showing me the fact that in this lifetime, in this new lifetime, he doesn't want children. And he feels like he can't have children. So why is that, Fred? Why can you not have children in that future lifetime? Because he says that's the way you can pay back the karmic balance. Because if he had a child, there's a big possibility something horrific would happen to his child. He'd have to experience that as a human. And what you can do as a soul is say, actually, I don't want to do that because that's just too much. Let me focus on being of service. I'm not going to have children. So that can be how you can pay that back and have it cleared that way. Um, also as well, it feels like he actually isn't made to have children. He said, and that's the thing. Some people just are not, and that doesn't mean say you're an abuser. It just, you're not made to have children. Does that make sense? What are we doing? Ten of Swords. Coming from that into that. So coming from that hopelessness into that. So, right, okay. What guidance have you got for people that are watching who may have been abused by their parents and how they can move forward and heal or understand it? very quiet it feels like it's an area that is really there's still difficulties with there it's almost like he's saying he feels vulnerable at this stage not from us not from me but it's almost like a real vulnerability it feels like he's an imposter if he feels like it's imposter syndrome oh, what can i tell you about that look what i did um but actually fred out of anyone, you are probably the best one to talk to about this. He's saying love. To learn from their mistakes. He's saying one of the things he's learned is that not going into hatred frees you. So, trying to go into your love space with it. It's not about, don't waste your time trying to understand them, he's saying. Don't try to understand them. Don't pity them. But going to love. Don't let it cause you to then go forward and destroy your life and become that person. He's also saying if there is a chance 
that there is unhealed trauma to a point where you could then become them in a, in a different way. Say if they were physically abusive, you can become emotionally abusive. He says, make sure you don't have children going forward. He said, please, it's make sure that unless you know that you're of sound mind, body and soul, if there's a slightest of doubt, don't do it. Because there's so much focus and concentration needed on yourself that to then throw a little one in in the mix is just, it implodes. Um, so make sure that you step away from that. So it's one of the reasons why many people struggle to have children um, because of the generational lines. And that's not saying that you're not having a child because your mum was Rose West. That's not what I'm saying. Sorry, because I'll get or we'll get, receive a comment like that. <laughs> uh, my tummy's rumbling because I am fasting till lunchtime. How long have we got? Oh, 45 minutes. We'll be right. Um, it's not that. It's much deeper than that. You get my drift. Stop being patronising, Claire. Move on. Um, you say you owe it to yourself to heal. You also owe it to yourself to be honest with those around you as well. So talking to partners, friends, and if you are in a situation, because he's now moving on to where there is... This isn't just, you know, dad was an arc. I'm not saying that dad just being an arc. Because I know, or not getting on. This is, this is he's moving into something darker now. So this is when there was horrific abuse in the household. And not trying to cover up for them or make allowances to actually have those honest conversations. So for example, say grandpa did something to you. And your child wants to know about it or... You just don't talk about grandpa. What he's saying is you sit with them when they are old enough to be, um, to have that conversation, not as a child, probably not as a teenager when they're old enough. And you have an honest conversation where you don't go into anger. You don't go into blaming, shaming. You talk to them as a rounded individual. And he says that also helps to educate them, but it also helps to clear the, 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 the energy of secrecy within the bloodline. Does that make sense? So, there's something I need to tell you, Sally. Um, I was abused by your grandfather um, for some time. At the time, it devastated me and caused me lots and lots of problems. Um, it was sexual abuse. This isn't me, by the way. It's under the example. Um, I went to social services. I told my parents. Mum believed me, but Dad didn't believe me. Um, but I've learned from this as a human being that you have a right to know about it because it's in your bloodline. This has made me the person I am today, which I'm proud of. I have done this. In, so he says, when you're telling them, making sure you're not, you know, when your granddad was there, and, ah, 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 and it's all anger, because all that does is that child or adult child absorbs it and then they pass it on. So it's about getting yourself to a state where, or a stage where you can talk about it in an intelligent way balanced heart-centered way and he said and that's actually how you help to dismantle it because you're passing it on don't not tell the next generation you say because this stuff can flow through the line this stuff can flow through the line so if you're not telling your next generation about it how do they know that that is a potential for them or for their child he said that is a really uncomfortable thing to say and it's a really uncomfortable conversation to have but this is the place we have them on this channel we have uncomfortable conversations in fact it should be called claire thackeray uncomfortable conversations anyway moving on you see catch my drift so it's about being honest and open but not where you're just gossiping about it or you know great uncle i bet he was one of them oh sandra that kind of thing where that doesn't help anyone. But these are constructive, proactive, balanced, healthy conversations. And he's also saying that that's something that he's encouraging in his in this lifetime that we've sensed where he's going around talking about things. So. Look on that. We're on it. So. Have some cards for what you've just said there, please. Anxiety, yeah, moving forward. So, he 
he's, he's, he's using my word, alchemizing, an alchemist. So it's as the survivor of the abuse, or you may have not been abused, your parent may have abused somebody else. Do you know what I mean? So say your parent was a school teacher that abused somebody else. You're then left with this. You're, sorry, a hair. You're then left with this. Anxiety, feelings of being judged, of mocked. Um, but it's about being able to communicate and move forward with your emotions. Um, being able to stand in your heart space with it at all times. Um, so I like where you're moving on to with this. What do you do then if your parent has been an abuser but they've not abused you? Oh, I've got a rumbling tongue. Apologies. Um, can we have some guidance for that? He said it's very similar to what we've just covered with if you have been abused. You are honest and open about it. You do not try and hide it. He's saying because, again, th um, these imprints, abusive imprints, can come down in the line. So by telling, I know it's an uncomfortable, I know, I know, it's an uncomfortable conversation. But by letting your child, when they're old enough to have this conversation, know about it. Forewarned is forearmed. It's when people don't have these conversations. Um... So, for example, just to let you know, um, Sally, that your grandfather was a school teacher and we found out in the 90s that grandfather was abusing his role. I'm not going to go into it because I can't go into details on here. Um, it broke the family. They ended up, mum, um, mum and dad ended up getting divorced. Um, the family's fragmented. Um, we didn't speak to dad for some time. We ignored him and blanked him. Um, but I've since I've come through all my all my trials and tribulations as an adult, I've learned so much from it. It's been the making of me, not the breaking of me. And I want you to go. For, I'm, I'm telling you this for you to go forward as a healthy, balanced individual to know that this existed in your bloodline, but. It's actually what helped to make me and it will help to make you. But to be aware that we have this issue within the bloodline. Um, I don't want you to hate your granddad. I don't want you to judge him. But please feel free to ask questions about him. Um, that's how we do it. What we don't do is we'll tell you about your granddad, what he did to my poor mum and go and pass all that trauma onto them. It's that I like. Oh, I really like that. Thank you for that, Fred West. Um, I like that. Who likes that? Let me in the comment if you like that. Um, it seems like so. Even like talking about it feels like such a healthy, wholesome way to talk about things. Um, thank you for that. I'm really, really. Can I just take this? Take a moment for myself here. I'm really glad I did this because I sat this morning. And I thought I don't want to do it. <laughs> I, that's the thing, isn't it? I could have gone. I can't. I cannot go on my channel and talk about it. I know the vast majority of people that follow me are beautiful, balanced human beings. When I talk like this about kickback, it's usually people that come in from the external. But I am so glad, and I will stand by this video, no matter what comes in. I will stand by this video, I will stand by this work, this teaching, like I do all the others. Because I am, this has been a gift as this. This has helped me, I'm having a moment here, this has helped me in so many ways, not that I was sexually abused as a child, but just how we talk about trauma and how actually it can be in, you know, say you had a boyfriend that traumatized you, that did something awful to you or a friend or a work colleague, how we then go about it. Shh, don't say, I'm, I'm guilty of this, but actually we should be saying it. We should be talking about it because what happens if one of your nieces or grandchildren or whatever listens in and they're struggling with something and they think, oh, God, something happened to Nana or Auntie or Uncle or, oh, I can, t I can talk this. And that he's also saying, there's me saying this and Fred, that that's how you break this down. That's how you dismantle it. That's how you heal it. And that's how each generation can take it forward. Um, and he's saying, rather that, that's my door, by the way, but Gary's in, he can answer it. But... Rather it being a ball of anger that goes down the family line 
or society it's that ball of anger that's that starts but then we take it and we go right okay thank you for that and then we start to alchemize it and so talk about this could be Freda Rose, Myra, they could be Peter Sutcliffe, it could be anything and then we take that and to also as well talking about your collective stuff as well so things that happen in the straight about bringing out the pluses of it, how it changed you, how it woke us up, how it affected us, how it made us better human beings, how, you know, that morning when I found out that Fred that lived next door, but one had done that to his daughters. I went in that morning, wrong work up, told him I'm not coming in because I'm spending the day with my children and we just cuddled, hugged and made cakes. That's how you alchemize it. What we don't go is we don't go, open the windows and the nets. And we start, you know, doing like the old Rita Swim Bob 2 where they go out and they start watering the garden, rubbernecking to see what's happening. Um, we've all done that as well. We've all done that. It's That's how we do it. So when things happen within your community, within your world, it may not be your family, is doing that rather than jumping into the gossip. Um, yeah. Ooh. Wow. Two cards he chose before, before we came on camera was Soul Song and Light Beings. Soul Song and Light Beings, to remember that you are a light being, that you are a body with a soul in. So not only do you have huge amounts of darkness within you, from incarnations, from all kinds of things, you also have huge amounts of light within you, and huge amounts of light that is waiting to come in to you. That the, the, the universe, that you are part of the universe, you're not separate. Because we're saying that a lot of the reason why people go down these avenues is because they don't realise their connection to source. So could we pull some cards from this deck, please? Uh, and we'll round up. I think we've done all we can. Do. Well, we're going to be doing some more in a bit anyway. I'm going to be doing a clearing on here for the land. And I'll let you watch me do it if you want. Visualise. So visualising the life that you want and knowing that you are a creator. Visualising your power, understanding about your soul family, who is in your soul family. Are you, like I was years ago, attracted in idiot boyfriends, situationships, crazy friends, all of that? Wait a minute, what tribe am I attracted in here? Right, what is this teaching me about myself? To know that we can change and we can attract in something better for ourselves. The Divine Feminine to become gentler, to teach children about being gentle. Oh, that's it. Yesterday on the way to the gym, I got Whitney Houston's song. What does it teach them? Let them lead the way. What is it? Um, Whitney Houston. I didn't know why I got these words, Whitney Houston. Um, oh, what's the song called? It's about children. Oh, I hate this. Teach them well. Full lyrics. Eyes going again. Apologies. I wanted to. I, I wanted to wait until my eyes had fully settled, but it is what it is. I believe. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. Everybody's searching for a hero. People need someone to look up to. I never found anyone who fulfilled my needs. A lonely place to be and so I learned to depend on me. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fall, if I succeed, at least I'll live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. Because the greatest love of all is happening to me. I found the greatest love inside of me. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. 
give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. And it goes on and on. And if by chance that special place that you've been dreaming of leads you to a lonely place, find your strength to love. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. I got that song yesterday on the way to the gym and I didn't know why. So, the words from that song, visualising the greatest love of all. So taking from this video, the greatest love of all. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a child, whether you're a survivor, a vi a vi whatever you are. Um, can you have some final cards please? From this deck, final card please. Inward revolution. Inward revolution. Light beings. So right now we know that there are many inward revolutions happening at this time. Implosions, people realising that there's more to this than they have been led to believe. People coming back on grid, he's saying. All of us went off grid. We may not have been doing what he was doing, that we know of. We will have been doing aspects of it in other lifetimes. But now we're coming back on grid. So don't go into fear. Come back on grid. He said you can also choose to come back on grid sooner. Um, you can see it with people that empty look. Um, light beings. The universe. Is there another, I think there's another message that wants to come through. Inner voice. What is your inner voice telling you to do? What's the inner voice that I need to do? Is the in how damaged is the inner voice? Is it your higher self that's running the show, or is it your lower self that's running the show, or is it something else? And this is about oh yeah, but Claire, what if there is an energetic interference? I get that, but you have to, as a person, be able to go right. Wait a minute, boom, step back. Is this love? And that's the thing, isn't it? Inner voice. What is your inner voice telling you to do? Tell us straight. Do it. You know, what is your inner voice? If you think about all these billions of people on the planet with all these inner voices, what are the inner voice is telling them to do? Create space for yourself and for enlightenment. Create space for enlightenment. Create space. In order to enlighten, you have to create space. So how do we create space? He's saying the darkness within you has to come up and out and be seen. In one way, shape or form. Whispers. So this is across the universe. Beings of light trying to help you. The whispers in the wind. Ooh, to me rumbling again and soul craft this isn't easy stuff this is soul craft this is being able to take a dark incarnation and really learn from it and sit with it and look at it but also allow it to be light because there are people out there that will straight away and let's hope they're not subscribers want to have a bonfire on this channel in this video because it's like how can you do that i've had it in the others that's why i'm talking about it but actually this is about soul craft this isn't just about looking at the darkness of others but it's about looking at yourself um and wanting to break through and the healing that can come from that that impacts you and people going forward So, final card. Oops. Chan Channeling. That to me is the confirmation that all that we've said, discussed in this video is true. We are speaking, I don't doubt it for one second, but we are speaking to the energy of Fred West. And he has been channeling information from his own soul path. Um, Inward river. That's interesting how that's gone like that. That's interesting. Anyway. So 
final card from this deck, a final card from this deck, final card for those watching, from this deck, final card for those watching, please. Ace of Wands, taking yourself forward. The Queen of Swords at the bottom, direction. Taking charge of yourself today, taking charge of your traumas, your pain, your difficulties. Um, and embracing that inward revolution that wants to come in with the soul craft that we've spoken about. Um, so, before we go, let's just close, some, just close something down. I'm going to bless the land as well. Bless the land of Cromwell Street and any souls. We will open a portal and we will help them to transition. So, first and foremost, thanking Fred West for stepping forward. Thanking the beings of light that have assisted today, that have held space for all. So we're just opening back up to let tr Tread, Fred transition. Tread, Fred transition. Um, sending gratitude and thanks. That's closed. He's fully transitioned. Now I'm going to go, don't try to follow me with this, but by the way, I was going to do it off camera, but I want you to be part, but don't try and visualise it yourself and, and just don't. Um, I'm going to go now to the land where 25 Cromwell Street is. My main guide is there. He's now closing down any dark portals that are still there, selective. They're going under into the ground to cleanse there, obviously where the bodies were buried. Um, one of my female guides, she's singing, she's Native American, she's singing. And the frequency of the words is going into the ground. They're also planting flowers there, these beautiful, beautiful, colourful flowers that aren't just flowers, there's codes within the flowers that go within and into the land. Um, opening the portal up to assist transition of anyone that is anchored on that land at this time. And they're just blowing air around it, blowing wind around it. All souls are fully transitioned now, okay? They're filling the land with love, laughter, joy, creativity and abundance. They're also doing work within the lines and the grids on, on that whole street actually, to be honest. Placing the sun above the land to shine down. Blessing the land. Stepping back. And there you go. Anyway. Did you enjoy that video? Hopefully you've got something from it. You may want to re-watch it and, and take notes if you need to. Um, father Wound Group Healing, 7th and 8th of February 22 to pound. So Father Wound Group Healing is for anyone that either resonates with this video, that feels they just want to heal their blood, not, not just want to heal the bloodline. You don't have to have been abused. You can have issues with father-in-law. You can be a father yourself that's struggling. Um, we'll put. I'll put the intention on the group healing that if there is anything within, like we've been discussing, any potentialities for future abuse, we'll we'll clear it in the group healing. We'll put that intention on it. Um, so be generational father wound. Sorry, foggy head. Father wound generational healing. Um, you don't have to have been abused physically or sexually or it could just be that you just want to heal because all parents make mistakes and get things wrong. Um, clearing yourself forward so you can step forward for you, yourself and the next generation. Get yourself some inner strength going. Um, I 
Shall I let you know a little known fact about me? I had a friend years ago that was killed in a really bad situation in Leeds, teenager tortured. Um, and afterwards, one of the people that did it to her went into prison. And the, I was only reminded of this this morning because I was like, why am I doing this work? <laughs> why am I sat with, I don't know, Fred West when I should be doing a royal video? I'm joking. <laughs> Um, or the moon video for this week. Anyway, and I was reminded that one of the killers actually went to the same prison as Rose West and was befriended by her. Became bosom buddies, apparently. Um, and it was almost like that moment of how that event in my life is still the catalyst, or part of the catalyst, of why I do the work I do today and why I don't mind jumping into stuff like this. I do get the odd, oh God, but it's not about them. It's always about what can come back in or you just, you just, you just, you put certain words on YouTube and they're going to attract in something. Um, and it's actually, you know, looking at that and that lifetime and that experience I had. Notice how I said lifetime. It's already a past life. Um, it's why, why I do what I do. And it's why I, I don't fear the dark because I've seen so many examples of it. So yeah, she became best friends with Rose West. And started um, sharing knitting patterns, as you do, with Rose West. You know, remember what we said about the crystals? Um, but sending light to that as well. Um, because, you know, even those people that did that act, and, and I've been told by my guide since that I was meant to be friends with that girl, to experience that lifetime, to experience what it was to then be able to become a healer. Because everything you go through as a healer, your life is your teacher your life is that's where you get your knowledge from it's your life it's your own darkness it's your own traumas and your pain and how you can alchemize them anyway so next group healing sorry when i've done that kind of work my brain goes a little bit i want to go get some vegetable soup homemade soup and break the fast um 7th and 8th of february 2024 7th and 8th 22 pounds to take part you go below description box pinned comment scroll down a little bit it'll say the father wound it'll say watch this video for more information that's a separate video from this one you can watch it if you want scroll down a little bit it'll say to take part click on here that's where you make payment i will not email you because i just haven't got the time to do it um so you make payment i get your name you put on my list you put on my grid you put on my physical grid my energetic grid and those two days the seventh and eighth i will be channeling that healing to yourself you can have it wherever you are in the world time difference doesn't matter there's no zoom links no courses nothing it's energetic healing sent to you and you you feel the shifts you feel the change it's an experience um 7th and 8th of february 2024 and i think that's it if you've enjoyed this video like i want more of that mrs thackeray um go to my playlist I think I had a criminal section on there, did I? I may do, I may not do, but if I don't, go to the channeling section and scroll down and you will find, because the, there is a lot to learn from all the videos I've done with the criminals, with all of them, is Peter Sutcliffe, Jimmy Savile, um, Myra Hindley, The Craze, Mrs. Cray, um, and this one now. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video if you think it can help someone. Love to all, go off, Give yourself a few minutes to come to, um, drink some water, take it easy for the rest of the day, send love out to everyone, and this is my gift to you. Thanks for watching, love to all. Bye.